what hey, happened? Tom, I hate yeah. to interrupt. Um, it looks like your video is freezing up just a little is bit. It? Are you seeing that too, Bob? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. freezing up just a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know if the recording. Yeah, I'm on the campus Wi-Fi here. Maybe we need to get out here. So what? The Wi-Fi got to solve that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I look back to like when I worked for my grandfather, I had young ideas and I wanted to help him you know, move forward with his business. And yeah, you know, there's a happy medium between experience and doing the job and young ideas and doing things a new way. Absolutely. And you know, we're bringing them together. Kind of model model. Model. So, I mean, I've grown so much in the last year, you know, just from him, just learning from him. Yeah, because like, like I was saying earlier, be the quiet computer guy now I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more outgoing um it's all about connections uh the, mm -hmm. the podcast connections you know stay connected with the wi-fi guy it's about you know treating people the right way you know not yep. necessarily the business relationship but you're working with the people understanding the situation making the connection and 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 doing things the right way with that so um, i mean it's just well said from home we got the contract we took it away from the big boys and they had they kept that contract for over five years now what mm -hmm. happened was when the contract was awarded they were doing a little bit of a flip to where they weren't going to be as generous to the small companies that helped them get there okay we were not getting the opportunities that we were supposed to get so i stuck with it uh, even though i took a huge cut mm -hmm. in pay and i learned from it then i got an opportunity to go by myself and I did that, and from that is when I started to meet your dad. Um, I was solo, I went by myself, and I started building a, a more of an environment of hiring or bringing on board other subcontractors. So by the time about a year passed, I had already had 27 some con subcontractors under the contract that I was working wow. for different customers. And the whole time I was doing this, the thing I kept, what's the different, what differentiates what I'm doing from what everybody else wants to do? And it was really just very simple. I developed in my mind a strategy. I developed in my mind a business methodology. I also developed in my mind a network, <clears throat> getting to know people, getting to know them, not only just from a business aspect, but, but also from a personal like, aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Because to me, we're all human beings. We're all people. We're just doing what we're doing, you know? I learned a valuable lesson of first, listen to what the customer is saying. And then second, provide them an answer that, that they know, one, you know what you're talking about. And two, mm -hmm. it plugs into what they just told you. Because right. so many people can pontificate. They're very smart. A lot of smart people. A lot of pontificate. A lot of you've triggered something in their head. And now they've gone off on a tangent, and you're like, well, you're not yeah, even talking about the first mm -hmm. well, I um, To build on your, like, what you said at the tail end there, I mean, what did you go to college for? <laughs> my uh, degree is in art. <laughs> my degree is in art, and my minor is in music. <laughs> Get out of here. No so, way. So, two statements. The reason why I started my college career was because when I was working with my dad, we had a falling out. I was 17 years old, we had a falling out, and I just didn't want to work with him anymore. So I went to work for a local hardware store. Became the top salesperson at 17. Best thing that you can hear from anybody is, I'm proud of you. And yeah. you tell your son that old thought, you know, but when you hear it from your own son, like, I'm proud of you, dad. <laughs> like, that really makes your dad. He did, he did a good job. Oh, yeah. it's, so oh, yeah. it's so interesting to be able to know how because we both learned that from you like where that all came from where where you learned all of that you know from the gas station at 14 like hearing the whole why behind it it's just fantastic i can't well, even ab absolutely and and the team was always the best of the best you go out there and then oh yeah Bob was involved, like his team would fix the issue. And I mean, I sat there for all these years and watched Bob put that team together and, and find that talent, find his like-minded individuals out there. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to do that through all those years. And that's what I'm getting to do now. So, I mean, I, I just can't be, be happy. You get that group of people and you, and you, you get this synergy that's going and, and it's so 
it's so rewarding to, to know when you really are working together as a unit. And um, I am so proud to be part of the team. The person, Andy Ketzel, that hunted on his property, Boyce's property, Boyce had moved. So Andy was looking for a new place to hunt. So he hunted on our property. So Andy belongs to a hunting club in Clear Spring that needed Wi-Fi. So we go out there and they can't even make phone calls on the AT&T FirstNet phone because there's no signal. But T-Mobile works great. So we gave them T-Mobile Wi-Fi. And then, you know, that brought on the, the relationship with Atlantic Security. And I mean, just everything's connected. So they belong to the same hunting club. Um, yes, we get the you know, recommendations from them. Um, also, Brian Forsythe belongs to the same hunting club. So he's a Linden Hall farm. Yeah. And then that was the trip down to the Farm Bureau Conference. That's all because of where we live and the relationship that we have with the neighbor and the person that hunted on the neighbor's property. So oh, a whole right. story from what we did at the house to you know getting into the shop and then yeah. you know, getting into the shop was just the beginning. Like I had no idea how much work there was gonna be set up security systems, you know, getting all the paperwork done, you know, getting everything nice and organized, mm -hmm. you know, getting it to the point where, where it is today. Um, just a ton of work. You know, I think I think what a theme that I'd like to share with anybody that's going to watch this is, you know, as you look at where you are individually uh, in your life, and if you're not happy with what you see, um, that's probably a, an opportunity to make some changes. You know, do something that's going to bring you joy, bring you happiness. It could be a, a different relationship, it could be a different job, it could be just you know, looking and doing some real serious analysis of who you are, what you are, and where you want to be. And one of the things that I've seen in my life to help me get through those times when you're just, you're just <coughs> contemplating what, what's next? What do I need to do next? I go to my friends. <clears throat> I go to the people that I've known my whole life. And you start talking. You know, it, it doesn't even have to be a subject, you know, focus. It's just mm -hmm. conversation. Just throw something you know, out there. Yeah, anything, anything that begin, begins to, you know, weave this commonality right. blanket that we all want, so we yeah. all feel good about who we are, what we are, and where we're going. And to me, we should never think we're doing this solo. We should never think that we're we're, all, we're just doing it ourselves. We're not. It definitely will. It'll a light bulb will, will come off in your head to say. I'm looking, I've been looking at this all wrong. I mean, I really want to rely on my friends and family to help me achieve something or help me figure out what's going on. And then bring all that back to what we're talking about right now. There's a father and son relationship that is unmatched of any that I know. There's a deep respect for, you know, honesty and respect and pride in doing the right job, doing it right the first time, understanding what the requirements are, understanding what the needs are, and not overdoing it, not not trying to achieve something grandiose when it really is straightforward. And to me, that's kind of the roadmap of how we should live our life. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the Wi-Fi guy is a, it's a vessel. And I am proud to be on this vessel. I know you are, Tyler, to be on this vessel. I'm proud to see this man's hand on the rudder. And um, and this is the way it's gonna go. We've, we've attracted Kyle Tibbetts, a man I deeply respect and deeply admire. He's super excited. We've also, it's, it's something that, um, it's not an exclusive club. It is definitely an environment where if you can contribute, if you have, creativity, if there's opportunity to blend those together, come on board the vessel. Let's move. Let's go together. So um, that to me is something I haven't seen in a long time in, in terms of how businesses are being built today. To go back to your point, Tyler, when you were talking about it's not about the money you make. And that's a good foundation to keep in mind because so many want to be entrepreneurs they are drawn into that because they think money they think it's going to make them more money than they they they've realized in the whatever methods they've used before oh, yeah. to me that's the wrong approach i mean i think there's going to be monetary you know, 
know yeah you're gonna, if you're doing be- it for the right reasons and you're doing it for the you know you're wise you know and we've gone over ours it's like that catapults you into that success and i mean people sometimes people make that money you know doing that entrepreneur out sometimes they don't make it um but that fulfillment aspect is a completely different story. I mean, that's a completely different animal, you know. There's one other category of this opportunity that, you know, when you think of the word sacrifice, okay, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of people that I've known that are either beginning businesses or have businesses that have survived the one to two year kind of earmark that everybody worries about. If you can stay afloat one or two years, looks like you're going to be able to develop a smooth sailing right. opportunity. But, and a lot of times their voice, they, they will articulate, oh, I sacrificed, I've sacrificed everything, I've sacrificed this, that, and the other. And I think to myself, well, the one thing that's really the, the sort of the catalyst to be where we are right now is the ultimate sacrifice that Doug, Dustin Higgins made when he went through this catastrophic health issue. Mm-hmm. Can you I mean, imagine? Like one day and your whole life's changed. Yeah. Can you imagine right. more sacrifice yeah. realizing that you are literally teetering on the end of, I'm done? Well, I mean, it's a privilege to look through his life with a different lens. Oh, um, like, it's, I don't know. I Like before, I, I had a total different perspective on everything. And, um, yeah, February 22nd, 2018, like all that monetary stuff just went right out the window. I'm like, hey, all you guys are worrying about all the wrong things. Um, and yeah, just, just from that day forward, it just gives you a different perspective on how you you deal with the day to day, you know, issues that, that arise or, or business mm-hmm. relationships or connections. Yeah, yeah man, but the, the one known to me at the time but then the first year I had my story published on the UPMC website. So if you search up Dustin Higgins Stroke, like anytime you hear the word stroke, it, it's not a good thing. And I knew this was going to be a good outcome. I just didn't know how, but I knew it was going to be good. So I, I wanted to have it written as, as an inspiration to anybody else going through something troubling because you just don't know. I mean, there's-